Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Is this working? Yes. Okay. Welcome. Welcome to the afternoon session. I was not expecting to see as many people as, um, as this, but uh, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for making it to this closing session for those who are here, for those who are um, online. And uh, while I was trying to prepare something for this, uh, for this closing session, what came to my mind was um, uh, last year when I had to talk to the climate negotiators in the UNFCCC, there was this ocean dialogue where we're trying to raise their awareness on ocean-related matters. So it was in the former Bundestag in Bonn, so it was a huge room with a lot of people, and it was probably less intimidating than today <laughs> for me. <laughs> because, and I'm going to quote an old friend on, the, on, on this, it's really intimidating for me to be interacting with the walking bibliography. This is how he refers to, you know, when all of a sudden you see the authors of all these super fancy papers and them. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so, um, this is the last but not least session because we'll have a, a, a I'm pretty sure, a very captivating a keynote speech. Uh, then we will have the summary of the main um, take home messages of the symposium and then the award uh, ceremony. So make sure you stay until the end. So, speaking of walking bibliography, I will. I'll now introduce the next speaker who will provide the summary um, information on the symposium and highlight the take-home messages. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Peter Hogan, who is the policy director at the Institute of Marine Research. He's also professor of oceanography at the Geophysical Institute of the University of Bergen. This would be enough for me, but there is still more. And he's also the chair of the expert group of the high-level panel for a sustainable ocean economy. And on his spare time, he was also part of the local organizers committee. <laughs> Welcome. Peter. Thank, thank you very much, Sarub, and thank you all. I, I, I do something which I don't normally do. I bring my computer up here because over the last 24 hours or so, I've been receiving a number of emails from session conveners and so on on, on what, what they would like me to say here with, in the space of a few minutes. Uh, no, uh, uh, I think uh, wh where I will start is uh, something facts that we have available, which are, which are sort of easy to talk about. Here's the number of attendees. Uh, the, the, the gender balance, which looks pretty good, the number of countries, I think we can be happy with that. What I want to say uh, to this is really that people make a difference. What is, isn't shown on here is that more than 40% of the attendees are actually early career ocean professionals. And new people coming into our community is really, really critical. And let me make one analogy, analogy, analogy to the town we're in. I'm actually born and raised in this town. Uh, it grew in the 1500s very, very much, and the time it got its identity, more than half of the new registered citizens each year were actually born abroad. This has been very international. This comes from a history book by a historian, Hammarborg, in 2020. So do accept newcomers. They ch shape your identity, and we like to think that this town has an identity which is shaped by the newcomers who come all the time. So I'd also like to mention briefly the crown prince who was here in the beginning. Um, he was here because he's a crown prince, but also before, because he's committed. He, he dives, he thinks about it. also the county mayor we had yesterday is quite committed. And I'd like to quote also uh, the CEO of the Statsråd Lemkul Foundation, the one uh, with the ship that we were on on, on, on Monday night. He says he, he's a shanty singer and he's been very dedicated to this ship. He says that he loves these ships, but, but after the expedition, there are two ships he loves even more, and those are partnership and friendship. And I think uh, that is also a take home message from, from this one. Um, so, um, moving on, where are we from? These are the country distribution, largest group from USA, then comes Norway, and you can read yourself. Um, uh, where, where we are from. Um, this is pretty good, I think, uh, but you, you can make your own, uh, 
We have Canada, Spain, UK, India, Australia. A little bit down the line, we have people who come far away. There have been this number of presentations, and I don't read it up. Um, it's uh, uh, been a quite extensive effort for, uh, for, for all the contributors, and thanks, thanks to all of them. Uh, people have flown in from far away, and uh, I don't have carbon calculations here, but we, we will certainly make those. Um, then I'd like to say that words make a difference. Uh, you, if you noticed it, the ECFO acronym this year is Effects of Climate Change on the world, World's Ocean. Not oceans, but ocean. Um, 20 years ago, I heard an acronym, One Planet, One Ocean, which really captured me. Uh, we have slogans like the ocean we need for the future we want, the science we need for the ocean we want, slogans, one-liners, elevator speeches when you get together with your prime minister. Those are really important. And we've had a slight link to the Norwegian government this week, who had their ocean conference jointly with with all of these other things in, in what has happened here. One ocean expedition, one ocean week. Um, the, the ocean brings us together, it doesn't divide us. So, um, uh, then uh, moving into what I will be trying to pick out uh, some highlights from. We have asked for highlights, surprises, trends and gaps for all the sessions. And you can count the number of sessions and work group, and you can imagine what a job it is to analyze that. This is the, 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 the word cloud from, from the documents that we got back. I can assure you that the, the, the conveners um, will look at this, uh, all of the reports, more, uh, uh, in, a, in a more systematic fashion than I've been able to do over the last uh, few hours. So, so we will take that with us, and it will be used uh, as, as you have submitted it. I'll, I'll pick a few then, and that is up to me, not having, having discussed with any of my, my fellow organizers. So uh, I think while that one is on, uh, from, and spending most time on highlights and maybe not so much on gaps, which are quite a num high number of gaps, as we can imagine. Um, of the highlights, there was a scene-setting uh, title that many people have noticed. What could the ocean look like by 2030 if we shared it equitably and used the knowledge we already have available? I think that's something we all should think about. There's been a talk on it, but let's think about it. And then I picked a few on the, on the scope of the conference. Uh, there was uh, on smart fishing for climate change mitigation and adaptation. I think for the first time in this conference, a dedicated session to, to mitigation by fishing industry. And uh, you find things like, uh, you know, uh, efficient in terms of CO2 per landed ton and in, or efficient in CO2 per revenue. There are these questions that we haven't asked so much before. And in ocean science, economics coupling, there was a study of uh, blue natural capital in a cost benefit uh, integrated assessment model of climate change, so the social cost of carbon emissions, topics that haven't really been highlighted in this conference before. Then there is a whole series of highlights on what I would call methodology, use of modeling uh, to address how species will shift at the global scale, transboundary stock, re stock redistribution of fishing stocks, um, new methods and new insights into identification of tipping points, and on that subject, quite impressive, it's reported that several attendees were able to, su to act successfully actually use the, these methods to their own data sets while they were here. Now, that's something that wouldn't happen in a, in a conference 10 or 15 years ago, I think. Um, novel work on uh, factors determining small-scale fisheries survival rate under increasing climate change impact, survival analysis, a method coming from health sciences, New oceanographic video tools and big data techniques to quantify impact of low oxygen on zooplankton. Connecting of climate projection models and Inuit communi community impacts uh, to uh, identification of seasonal to annual ways of life as a model for communication of climate knowledge to adverse groups. And uh, for climate vulnerability assessment, imperfect analysis using the best available info information, which can subsequently be improved upon, is better than postponing an assessment. I think that's a lesson that could apply also to other topics. 
And there are some highlights uh, which I will call findings um, that, uh, for example, the deep sea, which is normally considered data poor, time series there demonstrate strong interannual variability and rapid biological response can inform climate prediction. Um, I, could, I could go on. Uh, but in non-linearities, there have been several things focusing on that. For example, coastal pack ice as a tipping element uh, in areas where, where we have pack ice. Um, a lot of progress on incorporating realistic scenarios uh, for testing robustness of management strategies and, um, uh, and more. And there are some which are more into interactions and engagement, uh, effective engagement with rights holder and uh, st stakeholders, uh, co-design, co-development, co-production, this comes up from, from several. And uh, uh, where some issues are global, like ocean acidification, local effects d d require a, a local approach and engagement. And uh, um, uh, ocean-based carbon dioxide removal, yeah. Optimism, but also skepticism is warranted. And then a diverse set of perspectives uh, are essential, since the trust is low. I think that's a, that's a well-formulated uh, sentence. Uh, and finally, a pledge uh, to the community to make data available to all. We have too many data is available on request in papers. That, I think, applies also wider than to just, just one sen sentence. And finally, ECOPS um, discussed, discussed connection and relationship building and recommend to engage policymakers in a two-way two -way dialogue to build trust, learn about what matters most to them, and to build and foster international collaborations to mentors, events, and networking op uh, opportunities. You know, this, this is a rich material, uh, and, and uh, sooner or later my session chair is going to look at me, but, but let me go on for a little bit more. Um, there are some, uh, when we move to surprises, uh, there are some that I would call overarching or structural surprises, and then there are others which are more sort of on the scientific understanding. Uh, and of the first category, high-level definitions of nature-based solutions differ between IPCC, IUCN, EU. We don't mean the same when we talk about these words. That's, that's quite shocking, actually. Um, and then a special one. Uh, we know, probably, that policy could impact and offset scientific efforts in reducing carbon footprint, but that the impact of Brexit on Norwegian increased effort to catch mackerel should be of that kind. That, that's something I guess we didn't think. And then um, uh, increasing focus on equity and inclusivity in, um, in some of the research presented, which is a highlight. Scientific understanding, nonlinear system behavior is the norm. It's difficult to identify tipping points before they occur, with a lot of implication from management, of course. And then you have issues like heat waves, and, and you have fish recruitment in the North Atlantic, uh, uh, where, where there are very complex, or if, if at all, existing relationships as you might have expected them. And on the contrary side, it turns out that single species management strategies can perform pretty well under climate change. Now, how, how can that be? And then we have other things like incorporation of jelly plankton, which I guess hasn't been, been too common, can alter projection of climate change influence. Oxygen loss is an important ecological stressor across diverse marine ecosystems of the world, but in another place it said it hasn't be really been used in, in fisheries management. Uh, uh, plans, so. um, kelp, surprisingly low effectiveness as CDR. Uh, time for adaptation is running out for several species, and we may witness a drastic reduction of ecosystem structuring marine species, for example, cor corals and seagrass and kelp, uh, from their historical ranges. I mean, some of these uh, organisms uh, uh, have, have short generations, and, 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 and um, uh, there are constraints in occupying new habitats. Yeah. So, um, uh, I think I should actually move ahead, yeah, um, I should. Um, so, okay, let me, um, let me try to uh, close then, approach a, a closing. Um, I would maybe like to mention um, 
uh, one of the trends, move towards more transdisciplinary research and recognized need for co-design. That has come up several places, the one I would pick, which is a positive thing, I think. And a gap, uh, the need for dialogue and cooperation and translating the science into action, including using science to explore solutions. Uh, uh, so that was one, and, and, and uh, uh, I think I've mentioned the cap key um, uh, highlight and surprise. So uh, I think also, having listened to the last talk, looking forward, I think there's a lot of uptake from there that we need to think about. And uh, um, I know Gary is going to end this thing, but I think, um, I hope you will come back here to Bergen, maybe not for a no new ECWO, but for, an, for a week in April. Uh, because with the success of this conference, from our point of view, and with the Ocean Conference that drew the government here, with the Prime Minister and Five Ministers, with all the uh, things that, and, and, and with all that you bring to us by coming here, we can tell you there will be a, a One Ocean Conference, One Ocean Week, every year from now. In 2026, perhaps, this ship will be back, sailing ship will be back from another long, long cruise. And um, perhaps we will, by next year, have convinced even the municipality and the county to call this, center, this city not only the Ocean City Bergen, but One Ocean City Bergen. We will see, we are working on it, and we need you back to get this good weather again. Thank you. That's what you brought. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. I'm told that the worst thing that can happen in Norway is being late, so we need to, to rush a little bit. So I'll now introduce um, uh, a research group leader from the Institute of Marine Research in Bergen, Mrs. Mette Skern Moritzen, who will, um, um, who will uh, uh, announce the, the awards. Thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Tarib. So, um, I guess there are some uh, exciting, uh, excited um, early career scientists because uh, in this conference we only award early career scientists. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but judging by the quality of the presentations we had from early career scientists uh, this week, you probably wouldn't have won anyway. Um, we have. It's a bit hard message, but maybe true. <laughs> um, so I will tell a little bit about um, uh, uh, the process. So um, I was asked to lead the process, but I have uh, not uh, done this uh, by my own. I had this uh, dream team of uh, judges that has been attending all sessions, that has engaged with, uh, with um, those of you presenting uh, posters. Um, and uh, and uh, <laughs> I just have to thank all the judges for being so enthusiastic and for uh, being so also so engaged in all our discussions uh, on uh, the qualities of uh, on, on many different qualities of outstanding presentations. So while you all have had nice times out here in the in the in the in the daylight and having cakes and coffee, all these people have been in a dark room over there, cold, <laughs> no windows but endless discussions. So thank you all uh, to those of you who joined. Um, we also need to thank some uh, sponsors, uh, the Oyster Workshop uh, for uh, Early Career Scientists and Journal of Marine Science and Engineering uh, for a kind of a limited cash amount to the winners. We um, have some criteria that we have uh, been used when uh, judging uh, your work. Uh, they are actually quite similar for, for poster presenters and oral presenters. So it goes on the scientific and societal value of your work, structure and content, verbal presentation. We have also judged verbal presentation for posters, so how engaged uh, were the early career scientists in, uh, in um, presenting the posters and also in, uh, in responding to questions. Um, and uh, the use of visual aids, also in the, uh, spe specifically then in the oral uh, presentations. Um, so what we have done is to uh, start with all, the, uh, all the, the posters or presentations that the judges nominated and then try to shorten the list uh, over and over again and, and, and end up with three 
selected ones, three selected posters and three selected uh, uh, talks. Uh, but we did see that we would like to acknowledge the work of more uh, early career uh, scientists than only three in each category. So we will present a short list of the of the of the final ones before the before we um, um, before we choose the winners. So I will show you the short list, a rather long short list uh, for posters. Um, and we would like to thank all of you for uh, really excellent contributions to this uh, conference and also for making our life hard. <laughs> and I just need to... Um open my computer again because now it uh, locked and that was incorrect. <laughs> Here it is. Okay, so uh, the first winner uh, for the posters is uh, Alaya Morel. Is uh, Alaya here? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so the judges uh, say that uh, uh, on this, uh, for the poster and your presentation, that it was a novel and important research. Just come up, yes. <laughs> so, novel and important res uh, research with uh, policy relevant results. A very good balance between the visual qualities and content and easy to get the key messages and very well presented. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Oh, sorry, I forgot to put the, the poster up. So, <laughs> so this is what the winning uh, poster uh, looks like. Okay, um, moving on to the next um, poster. That goes to Kalina Grab. Is uh, Kalina here? Okay. <laughs> I hope she wouldn't mind. I'm her no, so fine. Thank I you. Will pass this on to her. Yes. Thank you. I'm sure she's thrilled. She's at home <laughs> already, but um, I will. I will pass on the screen that she's probably going to. Wait. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, the judges uh, say about this poster that the poster gives a very good overview of the potential and innovative, uh, innovative <laughs> use of pH analyzer to support both ocean acidification research, but also communication to a wider audience. Efficiently and enthusiastically also demonstrated uh, by hands-on uh, demonstration during the poster session. We were several that were kind of following the, the pH development over the evening. Um, and that the poster had many good visual qualities, a good balance between text and photos, and were well structured and easy to follow. Okay, so we have the final poster, and that goes to Jessica Bolin. can see that uh, this poster is uh, <laughs> so this poster is very visually appealing a real eye catcher as you can see it also efficiently communicates the effort involved in the work and has a very good storyline and it was enthusiastically and well presented and we also saw some nice scientific discussions around this poster um, then we move on to the oral talks, again with a very long short list. I would like to congratulate all these presenters for a really excellent presentation. Um, a 
And of course, we don't have uh, pictures or videos of the presentations here, but you can go and have a look. Um, and the first uh, of the, the winners is um, Dylan Gomes. And um, what the churches are saying about uh, your presentation, uh, Dylan, is that this was a pre presentation on fair data for the future. Um, and uh, Dylan was challenging the audience about the data they are collecting and how these will be useful and accessible for use in 2100. It was an excellent presentation. It was a different type of presentation, not the standard um, introduction material methods and results. It had a, a conservational style of presentation and, and people were really feeling that you were talking to everyone in the room. So congratulations. The next uh, winner is uh, Alexa Fredson. Uh, say that uh, using comprehensive data sets, Alexa challenged the current paradigm that the marine heat waves always have detrimental impacts, um, which requires some courage from an early career scientist. The work was really well presented, it was very good slides, and the storyline was really well argued. And then uh, the final winner is uh, Tom Langben. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you will need to go over there to be <laughs> photographed. <laughs> And what the judges uh, said about uh, Tom's uh, presentation was that it was exceptionally uh, good graphically, that every single slide is um, visually balanced. And uh, Tom is using novel approaches to investigate the, how, light limits, um, how light limits northward expansion of visually feeding fish. Uh, Tom communicates very well with the audience and also provides very good storytelling. So that was... Uh, Uh, I'd like to call all the co-conveners of the symposium here on stage, not for a public hug, but for a, <laughs> <laughs> but for a, a last goodbye, and I'll hand over to, to Ger as our local host. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so we're getting to the closing remarks of the closing session of the last day, so, so um, yeah. Um, we have some thank yous to give, and um, I hope you have all enjoyed this conference um, mm. and that you have had some fun, that you learned a bit, and that you've uh, had uh, yeah, good discussions, met up with old friends, and made some new ones. Um, and I also hope that uh, this experience will live on uh, when you go back to your work, back to your emails, back to uh, your science, hopefully, uh, and that um, so. I think Peter did a very good job, and he could have stayed up here for the rest of the day, I think, in <laughs> summarizing. Uh, but I think, you know, please do your own uh, summaries in this uh, notebook that you, you had. That's a good use of it, I think, while it's fresh. So, um, we, um, we've heard about heat waves and that they can also be good. Um, and I think we can ascribe to that also after this week of maybe not extreme weather, but extreme um, unlikely weather. So it's been a fantastic anomaly that we all appreciate it here in Bergen. Uh, six days without any rain and sun every day. So it's <laughs> fantastic. Um, and we've joked a lot about ordering the weather, but you know, it actually yeah. it came through. So, um, yeah. And, and I'd just like to thank Matt also for, uh, I'm sorry to keep you off the streets, you know, and uh, in that dark room, but it's... Uh, <laughs> Really good job, a really important job, and we congratulate all the, all the winners, the ECOP winners. 
Okay, so now we have, uh, we have some, uh, some uh, remarks uh, in the end. And if you can move uh, a little bit to the side here, uh, please. We've had an arts project go in, and I hope you've taken some time to look at the different, uh, the different posters and, and images uh, on uh, display out there. This is the sculpture that's been uh, erased uh, during this week out there on the wall. And it's based all on uh, ocean material. I'm not going to uh, uh, say so much about it, but you can see the words of Jeanette who has done this uh, up on the screen now, and she's really appreciated it. And uh, she's been in dialogue with many of you. And uh, yeah, this is the, she calls it um, Whispers from the Deep Ocean Stories. And some of this, um, I, I saw yesterday they, they offloaded the rum that's been on board this uh, vessel for 20 months. Some of these ropes have also been on board uh, for 20 months uh, during the circumnavigation. So, but it's, it's various material, and um, I think, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time interpreting, but I, I think I see a surface and a water column, and it's filled with various plastic and other objects. So you can, of course, uh, have your own interpretation of this. And we will uh, make sure we, we preserve the image. I, I think that the material will be recirculated, uh, so in, in the good spirit of that. Okay, so uh, some thank yous. We have some organizations. Now we can go back so you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have some organizations, uh, IC Spices, uh, IOC FAO, which will take this all uh, further. We have this, we've been lending uh, you or lending the conference for, for this time. Now it's uh, moving on to uh, another place. And so thanks to all the sponsors, of course, uh, made, this, uh, made this possible. Um, steering, uh, Scientific Steering Committee, they had a, a crucial, important part in, uh, initially uh, in the planning when we, uh, we were uh, ranking the different uh, workshop and session uh, themes that we were getting. Uh, this has been a, a very bottom-up process, but we, we, got the, uh, we got in all the suggestions, and then we uh, had the scientific steering committee to, to rank them and, uh, and kind of, uh, so that we developed the program. And then the session and workshop chairs done a great job here on site and of course in the, in the planning uh, up to this event. Very important, very professionally handling and very much on time. So it's been really great, appreciate that a lot. Um, the, local, the locals has also done a great job, uh, I think, and, uh, and uh, we, we were really um, sort of stepping up towards, uh, towards this week. It's, uh, it's a lot of planning and a lot of things that uh, have been working really well, and Matt was talking about dream teams. I think that uh, this, uh, this conference has been composed of many dream teams like this, and uh, it's really well. And a hotel, uh, thanks to them as well. This has been a really sort of intimate uh, uh, conference, I think. Things have been uh, happening here, and we have to rebuild uh, the, this uh, room. And uh, perhaps some of you thought that it was slightly too intimate on the poster session. And, uh, and I'm glad we didn't measure the O2 uh, levels in that room because then we would have shut down, I think, I'm afraid. <laughs> but uh, it's been really well handled, I think, and uh, we have had lots of food, and uh, hopefully everybody has had some, find something to eat. And uh, there's been uh, quite a lot, and uh, too many cakes, uh, I fear. <laughs> um, and also, as you know, we've been producing this out not only for local, it's been uh, viewed for, uh, for the world. Um, and there's been quite a lot of people online. I think there was some official registrant, but there's more than 860 people actually who have at some point been, been in there and, and uh, joined uh, uh, altogether. So it's been produced here. Some slight uh, technical problems uh, first day, but other than that, it's been really working great. So thanks for that. And, and then just you guys, uh, us. Um, it's been, uh, we had, had, had responsibility. And we've had a lot of, uh, we've met uh, Thursday at four uh, for a, a video chat. Sorry? Seven for me. Seven for some, yeah, <laughs> for you. So it's been uh, great, and that's been going on for quite a long time, and then it's kind of intensified towards it. So I, I really like to thank you all for, it's been really great, very professionally handled, but it's been a great pleasure and uh, to, to, you know, talking friendship and partnership, and it's been really uh, fantastic. Um, and I'm going to miss that. And then, last but not least, all of you who came and joined and made this such, uh, in my mind, a, a great success. Uh, thank you a, a lot for, uh, for coming. Um, and um, at the very uh, last uh, point then, so this is, uh, as uh, Peter said, we only need one thing, one meeting, one 
instance to make a tradition in here in Bergen. So uh, the One Ocean Week is now a tradition, but uh, the ECFO is for sure a, a tradition now with five. So I guess the next question is, where to next? And that there was an open space here in, uh, in, uh, in the map. Uh, so uh, I think uh, somewhere there would be a good spot. Uh, we could actually put down both the name and, and, uh, and the dot. So we are, uh, we are contacting uh, some uh, potential um, um, people for, uh, for hopefully a, a sixth uh, conference in, in some, some years, three, four, five years. But we, we don't have anything uh, uh, yet. Um, okay? We will, we will, we will. There will be another one, yeah. <laughs> so um, with that, thank you. The end. <laughs>